Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 4th, one day before Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, this first one is from CNN.com, breaking news. The title is, let me scroll up here, Decoding the Thoughts of Patients Who Can't Even Blink. I've done articles before about different devices that have been created to help people communicate that had very limited motion, like maybe eye movement, or they could move their mouth, or just, you know, but we're talking here, in this case of this story, we're talking no movement whatsoever, no control of any regular movement. And I'll read the first couple of paragraphs of the article here. It's very interesting. You can hear those around you, but you can't speak. You can't feel it. You can feel a touch, but you can't touch back. You can see, but you can't move even to blink your eyes. That's the life of completely locked in patients. Someone who has brain function but complete paralysis which can be caused by stroke, traumatic brain injury, medication overdose or diseases of the circulatory nervous system such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis also known as ALS. It is generally thought that completely locked in patients were unable to communicate with the outside world but a new study has shown otherwise. An international team of scientists have communicated with a completely locked in patient using non-invasive brain computer interface system. The researchers used the system to decode the, the patient's thoughts while the patients were asked yes or no questions according to the study published in the Journal of PLOS Biology on Tuesday. Niels Burbaumer, and I hope I'm getting that right, a researcher with the Wyatt Center for Bio and Neuroengineering in Switzerland and lead author of the new study, said he wasn't surprised by the findings, no surprise but pleasure. They use a type of infrared scanning on the brain and as long as they can detect the patient giving a different type of brain pattern depending on the question is true or false, yes or no, they found out that in a lot of cases, I think something like up to 70% of the cases or something like that, there's an actual distinguishable difference, meaning these people are actually understanding they've been asked a yes or no question and they've actually, they can train somebody, a family member to use these things to be able to ask people questions and it's the first time some of these patients have ever been able to respond and make their needs known. So. I hope they continue with this. I hope they develop more of it, uh, more uh, versions of it, and get the cost down so more and more people can use it. This is not a, this is an extremely rare thing. It's not a common thing, but still, for those people, can you imagine just being totally locked in? You can't even communicate with eye blinks or anything. And this is maybe the first time in years and years, if not decades, that you could actually communicate with anybody about what you what you want or uh, what you like or what you don't like. So, here's hoping they will go further with that. And this is for the youngsters, and well, not necessarily youngsters too, but I remember this. Disney's Club Penguin will relaunch as a mobile app in March. I guess it's going to be shutting down uh, the regular Club Penguin on the computer system. I remember my grandkids, all of my grandkids actually joined Club Penguin and played it for a while. Um, they only did the free version, but even in the free version, you know, you could do a lot of stuff with it. But it's not totally going away. The new one, the new app that's going to be a, a mobile type of app is going to be called Club Penguin Island, and it will carry over the same philosophy to a new standalone mobile with an updated look plus new features, games, and quests to engage with. So in that form, at least uh, Club Penguin will live on. So that's kind of cool. Well, I wanted to actually talk about a subject myself that's kind of a personal subject, and I would like to ask you guys as my viewers a question, and uh, that is, when you were younger, do you ever remember as a child seeing maybe a store display or a display at an event or a, a county fair or something like that that was kind of a little bit sciency or a little bit gadgety that kind of, I don't know, just stuck in your memory? I remember the very first thing. I must not have been more than about three or four years old, but I remember constantly when my mom would take me to Sears and we would go by the vacuum cleaner display, there would always be that floating beach ball up in the air. The vacuum cleaner would be turned so it blows straight up and it would be balancing the uh, the beach ball in the air. I'll show you a picture here. I've got a picture of a, uh, this is a kid's science museum. It's got the same basic principle of a display too. It looks like it's an enclosed uh, blower of some kind. may even be an enclosed vacuum and it's suspending a beach ball in the air and I just thought that was the most fascinating thing. And uh, I remember one time one of the vacuum cleaner salesman guys actually grabbed the beach ball and handed it to me, you know, and then put it back up where it was floating back up in the air again just to kind of show me how it worked because I was curious about it. And, uh, you know, my interest in science goes all the way back to when I was as young as I can remember. And the next thing I remember, too, is when going to uh, County Fair, the uh, Culligan company had a water display, and it was a faucet floating in the air. 
And until I was older, I didn't quite figure out the trick of how this faucet was being displayed in the air. But there's just basically this faucet up in the air. And I'll show you a picture of a version of it. This isn't the, uh, the Culligan water softener version, but it's just a different version of it. But yeah, just a plain old faucet attached to nothing. And then water coming out of it going into some sort of container or something like that. So yeah, those are the first two things I remember at a very young age. And then when I was older... Uh, I couldn't find a picture for this. I looked around for this, but there used to be a display that I like to see at Ace Hardware. Um, I think it was just Ace Hardware. I don't think it was a true value hardware, but it was a, a dry lock paint display. That's a kind of paint that you paint cement walls or walls of your basement to uh, seal them against moisture or leaks and stuff like that. And they would have an aquarium with two concrete blocks in it. One of them was painted with the dry lock paint, and there was water going into it, and the water would flow out and around behind it but none of the water you could tell it was almost all the way full on the inside part of the block but nothing was coming out and it was completely dry where the dry lock paint is and then the other display had an equal amount of water going into a concrete block but it never quite filled up on the inside because it was just gushing out through the because the concrete blocks are porous the water was just basically pouring out of the concrete block so I thought that was a cool display and then my favorite display I call it the PC7 epoxy man there's there were quite a few several different versions of this and I'll put a picture up of the PC-70 epoxy man. Some of them will look more like a man, some of them did it, but it started out as a pop bottle and then on top of the pop bottle they used some of this PC-7 and then they glued a golf ball to it and then somewhere on the front or the side of the bottle they would glue a kitchen faucet to it, um, sometimes a pen or a pencil, sometimes a piece of wood on the side and what they would do they had it chained to the to the display but you could like lift it up they just didn't want you to take off with it and they would ask you to actually try to pull the stuff off that was was uh, bonded with this PC7 epoxy and try as I might I never could get anything off of there uh, that was bonded with that PC7 it held so good that kinda was one of the reasons why I still I mean I even buy the PC7 epoxy still I've got some in a, in a drawer here right behind me and uh, that stuff is it's uh, it's pretty much the same same principle as JB Weld it's just slightly different but pretty close to the same thing but yeah when you put something together if you make sure it's the right kind of materials and you clean the surface right and everything like that it is pretty much stuck there permanently I mean you basically have to break it off and sometimes you'll break off a hunk of the material with it so I would like to hear your stories and especially if they're they don't necessarily have to be these stories if they are stories like this go ahead and share them too but if you have even different stories of uh, some display you saw at a, at a fair or an event or a store or something like that that kind of helped get you interested in gadgets or science or anything similar to that I'd like you to share it with me in the comments uh, or even make a video if you care to make a video and send it to me and I'll I'll feature it on a future TDD report so anyway that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week